In this video, I am going to discuss about marginal costing. Marginal costing is a costing technique which only considers the variable production costs. This is really important. Under marginal costing, the variable production costs are considered. Both direct and indirect variable costs will be considered under this technique as long as they are production costs or also known as the inventory costs. Following points are described in that which costs can be considered under the marginal costing and which costs cannot be considered under the marginal costing. You have to have a clear understanding about these points. Only variable production costs will be considered. Only inventory costs are considered. Prime costs are considered. Prime costs are the direct variable costs. Variable production overheads are considered. These are the indirect variable costs. All these points are describing about the same thing, which are the variable production costs. Fixed costs are not considered. Period costs are not considered. Fixed production overheads are not considered. Non-production overheads are not considered. All of these points are describing the costs which cannot be considered under the marginal costing, which are non-variable production or non-production costs. Simply under the marginal costing, we can only consider the variable production costs. It can be either direct or indirect costs, as long as they are production costs. This is the marginal costing cost card, which can be used to identify the marginal costing per unit. We consider the direct material cost, direct labor cost, variable production overhead costs. So finally, we can calculate the marginal cost per unit. Now you can identify each of these costs. Direct material is a variable production cost. Direct labor is also a variable production cost. Variable production overhead is a variable production cost. So it is really important only consider variable production costs under marginal costing. Now let's do this example. Company A manufactures product X. Following are the costs that incur to produce a unit of X. Calculate the marginal cost per unit for X. As now you know, under marginal costing, we only consider the variable production costs. So now what we have to do is we have to identify whether these costs are variable production costs or not. So direct material cost. This is a variable production cost. Direct labor hours per unit. They have given the direct labor hours that will be taken to produce one unit. And they have given the direct labor cost. This is a variable production cost. And they have given the fixed overhead per unit. Do we consider this cost under marginal cost or not? No, we don't because we only consider the variable production cost. And this is a fixed cost. We do not consider the fixed cost or non-production costs. So this information is not relevant to this calculation. Then they have given the direct expenses per unit. This is a variable production cost. Now we can calculate the marginal cost per unit. This is equal to 1.5 plus 1.5 multiplied by 6. This is the direct labor cost per unit. We have to multiply this value by this amount because 1.5 hours will be taken to produce one single unit and per hour rate is $6 plus 3. This is equal to $13.5. This is the marginal cost per unit per unit. This is the marginal costing profit statement. This will be used by the management accountants. The first line is the sales revenue. This is the total revenue amount which is equal to selling price per unit 
multiplied by the number of sales units and then we deduct the variable cost of sales as now you know under marginal costing we only consider the variable production costs so the opening inventory plus the variable production cost minus the closing inventory so here is the total amount of these costs we deduct this amount by the sales revenue then we deduct the variable non-production costs so then we can calculate the contribution so the contribution is equal to sales revenue minus all the variable costs variable costs we will discuss about the contribution in greater detail in the next slide then we deduct the fixed production and fixed non-production costs from the contribution so finally we can calculate the net profit this is the standard form for marginal costing profit statement now let's discuss about the contribution this term is used under the marginal costing contribution is the amount of revenue that remains after deducting variable costs associated with a particular product or service simply this means this is the difference between the sales revenue and all the variable costs this residual revenue will contribute to cover fixed costs and to make a profit let's go back to the profit statement here is the contribution we can calculate the contribution by two methods the first method is calculating forward this way the second method is reverse calculation this way let's calculate so here is the contribution so the contribution is equal to this is the sales revenue sales revenue minus the variable production cost variable production cost minus variable non-production cost variable non-production cost we can simply say that contribution is equal to sales revenue minus all the variable costs because production and non-production variable costs are considered under contribution the second method is we can calculate the contribution by reverse calculation the second method is where contribution is equal to profit plus total fixed costs this is the net profit and here are the fixed costs both production and non-production fixed costs so using the profit and fixed costs we can calculate the contribution these are the two methods so simply we can calculate the contribution per unit value which is equal to selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit here we have to consider all variable costs this is really important so if we want to calculate the total contribution we can calculate it by total sales revenue minus the total variable costs both production and non-production variable costs should be considered here as we discussed earlier the second method is where we can calculate the total contribution by using the profit plus total fixed cost these formulas are really important you should have an overall understanding about these formulas and you should be able to use these formulas under marginal costing now let's do this example calculate the contribution per unit so now we know contribution per unit is equal to selling price per unit minus all the variable costs per unit so they have given the selling price here which is nine now we have to find the variable costs direct material cost per unit this is a variable cost fixed overhead cost per unit this is not a variable cost this information here is not relevant to this question direct labor cost is a variable cost selling and distribution cost per unit which is also a variable cost but you should be able to identify this cost this is a variable non-production cost under contribution we should consider both 
production and non-production variable costs. So using this data, now we can calculate the contribution per unit. All variable costs per unit is equal to 0 0.5 plus 1.2 plus 2, $5.3 dollars contribution per unit. Now let's do this example. Selling price of product A is $20 and 1200 units were sold last year. Variable production cost per unit was $9 and the distribution cost per unit was $1. If the profit for the year was $5000, calculate the fixed cost for the year. Using this data, we can calculate the contribution per unit, which is equal to selling price minus all the variable costs per unit. Selling price is given here $20 minus variable costs 9 and 1. 1 is a non-production variable cost. So the contribution per unit is 10. But the question is not asking about the contribution per unit. The question is asking for the fixed cost for the year. Now we have to use the other formula which is this one total contribution is equal to profit plus total fixed cost total contribution is equal to profit plus total fixed cost the profit is given here which is 5000 we can calculate the total contribution by multiplying the contribution per unit by the number of units they have given the number of units sold which is 1200 so the total contribution is equal to 10 multiplied by 1200 which is 12000 so this is here 12000 plus total fixed cost now we can calculate the total fixed cost easily total fixed cost is equal to 7000 This is the basics of marginal costing. You have to have a better understanding about the formulas when it comes to marginal costing. So these are the formulas we have discussed so far. Total marginal cost is equal to total variable production costs. Marginal cost per unit is equal to variable production cost per unit. We can simply divide the total marginal cost by the number of units. So we can calculate the marginal cost per unit. Then we discussed about the total contribution formula. Total contribution is equal to profit minus total fixed cost. Total contribution can be calculated by another formula. Total contribution is equal to total sales revenue minus the total variable costs. This is really important. We have to consider both production and non-production variables for the contribution. Whereas for marginal costing, we only consider the variable production cost. This is an area where students get confused between the marginal costing and the contribution. So pay close attention when it comes to marginal cost and the contribution. And finally, we can calculate the contribution per unit by taking the difference between selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit. Here we consider both production and non-production variable costs. Now let's discuss about the advantages of marginal costing. This is simple and easy to understand. As now we know, we just did some example questions. This method is relatively easy compared to the absorption costing. Variable cost per unit is easy to identify than fixed overheads per unit and no need to calculate the overheads absorption rate. As now you know, under absorption costing, we had to calculate the overhead's absorption rate, which was a bit lengthier and complex. Suitable for short-term decision making, such as for one-off decisions. This is really important. Marginal costing technique is mostly used for the one-off decisions, whereas absorption costing is more suitable for long-term decisions. Because under marginal costing, we do not consider the fixed costs. Fixed costs are usually impact the business in the longer term. 
solution for the disadvantages of absorption costing which means we can use the marginal costing for the disadvantages of absorption costing which means we can cover the disadvantages of absorption costing using the marginal costing technique this helps in cost control because under marginal costing we can identify each variable cost that will be incurred for a cost unit so we can easily analyze these costs and control these costs disadvantages of marginal costing not suitable for long term decision making and routine production because marginal costing is over emphasis on short term decisions direct labor cost is not a variable cost in most of the modern business world where employees are paid a fixed salary as now we know under marginal costing cost card we considered variable production costs which are direct material direct labor direct expenses and any other variable production costs but in the modern business world direct labor is not a variable cost this is a fixed cost because employees are getting paid a fixed monthly salary this is a limitation of marginal costing marginal costing may lead to underpricing because we are only considering the variable production costs because under marginal costing we only consider the variable production costs we do not consider the fixed costs so when it comes to pricing this may lead to underpricing meaning we may not be able to cover all our costs under marginal costing which means under marginal costing business may not be able to cover its all the total costs this means under marginal costing businesses may not be able to cover its total costs because only the variable production costs are considered we will discuss about pricing in the next video in that video you will be able to get a good understanding about the pricing under marginal costing and the absorption costing thank you for watching see you in the next video